How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. So yes, we are back, back on this FPL channel on YouTube. The FPL game for the 2023 slash 24 just dropped about an hour ago. So I'm going to give you guys my first initial draft. Now this draft is very kind of initial. What I did simply is went onto the website after it was launched, added a few players in, made one or two changes and bingo, my initial first draft was done. Now, if you guys have done the same, comment them down below. I would love to see what drafts you guys are currently dealing with. Are they better than myself? Maybe. But if I do see any red flags on your guys' drafts, I'll try and give you guys some feedback. Otherwise, hopefully see most of you guys in the comments down below, whether it be a welcome back. Tell me how your break has been. I've actually enjoyed the break from FPL, but I'll back in action with five weeks and two days till the Prem kicks off. So if you guys aren't exactly caught up on the hype of the current drop, don't worry. As mentioned, five weeks to go, you guys have enough time to board that hype. And this first draft is going to change a lot as the preseason goes on. Now, if you guys have been focusing on FPL for the past few days, you'll know that the prices were released from Monday afternoon. That's continued up until today where the game did launch. And I'll be giving you guys my usual reaction to the prices, which players are underrated, overrated, underpriced, overpriced, that sort of thing in the upcoming days. So make sure that you guys are subscribed and have that bell notification turned on because those videos, in my opinion, are not to be missed. So you'll get a notification when those videos do drop. But going back to the video that you guys are currently watching, my first draft, this is purely going to be the actual players. I'm not going to go over the best fixtures. That'll be an entire other video as the preseason does go on. But I actually think this draft is pretty good. You guys can let me know if you think this draft is good or not in the comments down below. I'm just hoping for an absolute banger of a season. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get into this actual draft. So going on to the actual team, and you guys will see that I've updated the graphics. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like them? Do you dislike them? Always like to get your guys feedback on these videos and how I can improve. Now, before we get on to the actual draft, I want to give a shout out to the bottom right hand side. If you guys do want to become a member, support the channel. Now is the best time to become one as you get access to that Discord server where I can have one on one chats with you. But there are other channels on the Discord server that are quite informative, other free channels where you can also reach out to me if you have any questions. Otherwise, the comments down below are always kind of a good spot to go on, but the Discord server I'm slightly more active in. You guys can also find me over on my Twitter page, at DaveyFPL, so go follow me if you guys aren't. But going back to the draft, you guys will see in terms of the money in the bank, 0, 0.0 left in the bank, so not a penny was spared in terms of this draft, only the best for you guys, but there are a few positions that you guys might downgrade if you want some cash in the bank. Can't really see too much use for that money in the bank, I know some people like to have a couple of 0 0.1 millions and save them for a rainy day. Now another big thing that you guys will see in terms of my formation is I've got five midfielders and two forwards at the current moment. I think you guys will see the same when you guys make your drafts. The forward options this season aren't that great. Yes, they might get better as the season kind of goes on, but the current moment, I prefer the midfielders over the forwards. So even think if you guys do want to go for a singular striker up front, you probably know who I'm talking about that's going to be leading your line. I even think that a 4-5-1 could be a formation to go for for game week one. But Percy, the 3-5-2 looks pretty strong for me, and I actually really like this formation. But as mentioned, my price reaction, midfielders versus forwards, all that good stuff will be addressed in the upcoming videos now that all the prices have been released. So if you guys have been watching my channel for quite a while, you'll know that I always go over the bench first, so I'll cast your eyes to the bottom of the screen. I've moved the bench to just below the actual team, and I've gone super cheap. So you guys will see the only player that I've mentioned on my bench is actually with the 4.5 defender Botman from Newcastle. I simply think that he's been quite underpriced and therefore great value even at 4.5. So he's the player I'll be relying on in terms of my bench to come off if I do need someone and I still think he can get FPL points. Now in terms of the other bench options, the 4.0 goalkeeper, the second goalkeeper of choice, I haven't really seen anyone that I'd go for at that slot. Maybe Forster from Spurs if he keeps that place. In terms of the next bench position, at 4.0, the other defender to go for, there are a few options here and there, but at the current moment, I want to see who plays in preseason. In terms of the 4.5 forward, there are a few options, but none of them probably will play, but they probably will be third on my bench most game weeks. So you guys can see, with 0, 0.0 left in the bank and a pretty cheap bench, I put all my stacks in my starting 11. So going on to that actual starting 11, and I know my goalkeeper might be slightly controversial. I've gone for the Chelsea goalkeeper, Kepa, at 5.0 million. So yes, a 5.0 million goalkeeper. I know a lot of you guys are looking at 4.5 goalkeepers, 100%, but I do actually like Kepa at his price point. Yes, he might not be the best value per million goalkeeper, but once he got into that Chelsea side last season, he was really racking up the points. So maybe a little bit of a nostalgia pick here because I owned him for the majority of the second half of last season. But I just believe that Chelsea were sure up defensively and therefore Kepa should get some more clean sheets. 
But if you're a position that you guys might not like, and 100%, I can agree with that. So if you do want to go for a 4.5, you can do that. The goalkeeper position usually in FBOL drafts isn't that important. The ceiling for a goalkeeper isn't that high, but I like Kepa because he usually gets some save points. But you guys let me know in the comments down below who are you going for. Probably a Pickford or a Leno, as I've seen them in a lot of people's drafts. Now the defensive department is kind of weird this FBOL season. We have uh, players that have been overpriced, but the majority of players have been underpriced. And I'll be going over the two of those options in my team. But the first option might be overpriced in some people's minds, but I believe that he's probably deserved his price point. It's Trent Alexander-Arnold at 8.0 million. So a player that's done it over the past F4 seasons consistently, I do believe Trent is worth his price point even at 8.0 million, and that's why I have him in my team. Now whether he plays right back or plays in midfield, I think the kind of attacking threat is going to be the same. So I genuinely don't think because he's playing midfield, he has a dramatically improved attacking threat. I guess you could argue that he's actually better at that right back slot, but I think Trent either way will get those assists. Now if you guys do want to go for a cheaper Liverpool option, we've got Virgil van Dijk at 6.0 million. I believe that's a massive price point to get him at, especially if Liverpool can shrub those clean sheets. Otherwise, everyone knows Andy Robertson at 6.5 million, so 1.5 cheaper than Trent, which is quite a big margin. But I still do favour Trent, think that he's the more explosive option, a play with a high ceiling, and that's why I've got him on my FPL team. But he is kind of a cash cow if you guys do want to go for a more upgraded midfoot apartment or forward department, as 8.0 million for defender is quite expensive. Luckily though, our next two defenders are quite a lot cheaper and I do believe they've been underpriced. The first one's Gabriel at 5.0 million. Now Gabriel versus Zinchenko is basically the debate to go over. Unfortunately, Ben White is 5.5 million. Won't pay that price when I can get Gabriel or Zinchenko at 5 mil. Now I've actually gone for Gabriel instead of Zinchenko because there might be some rotation. Don't really think so from Zinchenko's point of view, but Gabriel is nailed at center back and he has offered some set piece attacking threat. In terms of Arsenal fixtures, they're very strong at the start of the season, and I do believe they will get some clean sheets and hopefully some attacking returns from the defensive department. So an Arsenal defender is kind of a lock-in for my own team, as I do believe they've been underpriced with Gabriel and Zinchenko. Now another player that I was expecting to come in at 5.5 million, but actually came in 0.5 cheaper, is a Stupanan from Brighton. Now yes, the Brighton fixtures aren't the best in the world, but I do believe they're a quality side, and as I mentioned on Twitter, I do love a bit of a ball. So I'll pay 5.0 million for a stupid and offers that attacking threat. Might not be the most template pick, but I do like him at his price point. Now if Brighton can replicate the form that they had in last season, which I think is going to be quite tough, losing a lot of their options, McAllister, Caicedo looks like he will be departing. So I'll definitely assess Brighton after the transfer window is closed. But for the time being, a stupid and nice price point there. You guys can go for a 5.5 defender if you want to. A Luke Shaw is pretty popular, but I had no money in the bank, so I had to go for a 5.0. I guess it might be a situation where you downgrade Kepa to a 4.5, upgrade a stupid and to a Luke Shaw, that could be a situation to go for. But all in all, our defensive department, I believe Trent probably bang on in terms of the price point, whereas Gabriel and a stupid and I was considering them to be underpriced. You guys can leave in the comments down below which defenders are you guys looking at, and do you believe Trent is overpriced or underpriced? We're going to continue the trend of underpriced options going to midfoot department. I'm going to start off with Rashford, our United option of choice. I believe he's probably bang on there. I think 9.0 million is probably a fair price after a pretty strong season. Now, the big debate for me is going for Rashford or Bruno Fernandes. You guys go for both of them, 100% fine. But in my team, I've gone for one, and that's going to be the Englishman. Now, between Rashford and Bruno, I don't exactly know who is on penalties. Some people are saying it's Bruno, but I actually do think it's situational, as Rashford was on some pens last season. But that might be a big debate, it might be the swaying debate to go for, so in preseason, let's see who's on penalties. But for the time being, no problem with going for Rashford, even though he is more expensive, I do think he's slightly more attacking. Now let's see what happens with United, I know they need a striker, if they sign a quality striker, Bruno might be a more attractive option, as hopefully that new striker might actually score some of the chances Bruno produces. But the next midfielder option is going to be a no-brainer. It's going to be Saka from Arsenal. 8.5 million, great price point, underpriced in my opinion, probably the most underpriced option in the game at the moment. And I simply have to go from at this price point. Now you guys can go for Odegaard at the same price point. I know he scored more points than Saka last season, but I just believe that Saka is the better f asset. Now other options to look at, Martinelli, you could go for a Chossard, that sort of thing. They are slightly cheaper, but I still prefer Saka because he is nailed in that lineup. Now, Arsenal have improved dramatically over this preseason, and I just see their team getting better and better. So as mentioned, no-brainer in pretty much everyone's team that I've seen. Let's hope he has a great FPL season. Now, the next two options are going to be quite cheap. They both come in at 6.5 million. You guys might have uh, kind of predicted very tempered options because they are quite underpriced. The first one's Matoma at 6.5 million. So Matoma, Gross, or March, you guys go for either of them. They'll come in at the same price point, so yet again, it's the Matoma versus March debate like last season, but I prefer the Japanese international. 
So like with the Stupid Nine, let's see if Brighton do continue that good form. Not the best fixtures in the world, but they are a quality side. And at his cheap price point, might be a no-brainer. The next asset, as I mentioned, the same price point, it's Mbumo at 6.5 million. Might be an out-of-position player, listed as a midfielder. Might be playing up front with Ivan Tony suspended. What more can you guys kind of ask for? Now, I do actually expect Brentford to potentially sign another attacker, whether it be a striker or not. Let's just see what happens. But if they don't, Mbumo is a prime option at his cheaper price point. Now, yes, this might be kind of booking in a transfer, but with Ivan Tony suspended for so long, I'm pretty sure you guys would have wildcarded before he gets back. So keep an eye on this one. I definitely would see how they progress over preseason. If Brentford do sign another striker, maybe look at him as another option. Now, the last midfielder slot I was kind of scratching my head at, I had 7.5 million to spend. There was a few options at that price point. A James Madison comes in at that price, just signed for Spurs. How is he going to kind of adapt to that new lineup? Could go for a Liverpool asset, maybe a Luis Diaz at his price point, but the player I've looked at is actually Phil Foden at 7.5 million. So yes, a Man City option, but if you guys do look at their fixtures, you guys have to go for a Man City option. And I've chosen to double up, as you guys probably will know, the first option. So Phil Foden finds his way into my first draft. This might change, might go for a Jack Grealish, that sort of thing, but do prefer Foden from an FL point of view. Now, if Kevin De Bruyne, if you guys do recall, he got injured in the Champions League final. If that injury is quite severe, we might see Phil Foden having an increased amount of time on the pitch. Now, I know Man City options are always quite risky, and that's why I might see a James Madison in my final draft. But for the time being, I've actually penciled in a Man City midfielder. Let me know how you guys' midfielders currently looking. Do you have any changes? What are the similarities between my team and your team? Probably quite a few players, as this is quite the template. But continuing on the template, let's go over our first strike. I'm going to slap the Camp C armband on him already because it's Erling Haaland at 14.0 million. So yes, a very expensive price point, but I believe he's worth it. The Norwegian is a goal-scoring machine. Our perma-captain for the start of the FPL season, and Man City have some great fixtures coming up. So if you guys do go without Erling Haaland, that's quite brave. I did that for game week one last season. I went for Harry Kane over Haaland. I think Haaland scored a Hattie in the first game week, and it was downhill from there. So this season, I'm putting him straight back into my team, sapping the Camp C armband on him, as mentioned, and that's one of the 11 players locked in. But if you guys do go without Holland, post your teams down below and post the reason that you're going without him. I can't think that there's too many of you. But because Erling Haaland's such a no-brainer, I'm going to go on to the last option of our starting 11, our last striker, it's Gabriel Jesus. So 8.0 million, in my opinion, the second best striker in FPL at the moment. His XG involvement is simply outstanding, the best of the Arsenal attackers, and that's why I think at his price point, still an absolute steal. Now, another option that is quite intriguing is someone like a Darwin or a Gakpo at 7.5 million. But I don't really know what Klopp's going to play in his formation, and that's why with Jesus, even though they have signed these new options, I think he's still the out and out striker. So that's why I've actually gone for the two up front, because I like Jesus so much. I think he's a great asset in terms of FPL, and I expect Arsenal to start the season quite well with their lovely fixtures. So in terms of my starting 11, you guys can see the actual draft. Obviously, the bench options, I'll just fill in whatever options you guys want. A 4.0 goalkeeper, 4.0 defender, and 4.5 forward. And then as mentioned, Botman's great value at his price point. Now, if I was to recommend some changes here, the one option I was kind of looking at was Kepa down to a 4.5, maybe looking at Bruno Fernandes instead of a full Foden, but then I'll have to downgrade a Stupinan to another 4.5. Otherwise, a James Madison instead of a Foden could be an alternative, or simply any other 7.5 if you guys want to go there. Otherwise, in terms of the draft, I actually do like it, can't really see too many changes that I might make up until the deadline, unless I make a big switch like a Trent out, or try to go for a Haaland plus a Kane or a Salah. But you guys can comment your first drafts down in the comments below, or reach out on Discord as we can have a discussion better there. And let me know what you guys think about my first draft as well. But this is basically going to wrap up the video guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you don't like if you didn't subscribe if you have subscribed yet. Hope you guys see some of you guys become members to support the channel. Giving you guys access to that exclusive Discord content. Hope you guys are pumped for the upcoming videos. I think it's going to be a massive preseason. A ton of content it has been planned. But if you guys do have any video recommendations. Comment them down below. Always interested to see what you guys want in terms of these videos. But I'm going to sign off. Today the FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.